Magavanen, folks. It's been quite a while since we solved any differential equations here on the channel. So here's a nice looking nonlinear one. We're interested in solving for y in terms of x for dy over dx times d squared y over dx squared equal to x plus d squared y over dx squared. Okay, cool. So the first thing we notice is that the y term is missing explicitly. So we could transform this quite nicely by letting dy over dx equal u. Which of course means that d squared y over dx squared equals du over dx. That of course I'll write as u prime. So our original differential equation was y prime times y double prime equal to x plus y double prime. But because of our transformation, we now have u times u prime equal to x plus u prime. And this implies that we have u times u prime minus u prime equal to x. And if I factor out u prime, terribly sorry about that, then it looks like I have a nice looking separable differential equation. So we'll write this as u minus 1 du equal to x dx. And we'll integrate to get on the left hand side. I could write this as u squared minus u, or even better, as u minus 1 whole thing squared over 2. On the right, I have x squared over 2 plus a constant of integration that I'm writing as a over 2. And the only reason I threw an over 2 over there is so that I could get rid of it. That is to say, I now have u minus 1 squared equal to x squared plus a. And of course, I'll take the square root to get u minus 1 equal to plus or minus root a plus x squared. But that's u in terms of x. We're interested in y in terms of x. So we'll recall that u is defined as dy over dx. We have this minus 1, so I'll expand using plus 1. And that means we have 1 plus or minus root a plus x squared, which looks like another separable differential equation. So we'll write this as dy equal to 1 plus or minus root a plus x squared dx and we'll integrate to get y here equal to x plus or minus the integral of root a plus x squared dx plus some other constant of integration b. Now to evaluate this integral we might have to consider some cases and that is whether a is negative positive or even zero. So the easiest case is for a equal to zero in that case, y here equals x plus or minus integral of root x squared. So I'm just going to get x dx plus b. So in this case, we have y equal to x plus or minus x squared over 2 plus the constant of integration b. Which doesn't look all that bad, but it is kind of boring. However, for the case of a being positive, we actually get a nicer looking result, or at least a more interesting looking one. So in that case, I'm interested in evaluating i, that is the integral of root a plus x squared dx. And for that purpose, we'll make a transformation that is letting x here equal to a times the hyperbolic sine of theta. So this implies that dx equals, rather wait, I'll need a root a over here, much better, root a times the hyperbolic cosine of theta d theta. And of course we know that cos square theta minus sin square theta is equal to 1. So what we have here is a 1 plus sin square theta scenario that equals cos square theta, of course when we factor out the root a term. So this implies that i here is now, root a could be factored out, but you have another root a because of the differential element. That means you're left with a factored outside. Integral of root 1 plus, terribly, sorry about that, sinh square theta times cosh theta d theta, which implies that i here is now just a times the integral of cosh square theta d theta. Okay, cool. And now for some hyperbolic trig identities. So cosh square theta can be expanded as one half of 
If I remember correctly, this should be 1 plus cosh 2 theta. So this means that i here is now a times the integral, rather a over 2 times the integral of 1 plus cosh 2 theta d theta, which is quite straightforward to integrate. We now have a over 2 times theta plus sinh squared, sinh 2 theta, that is, over 2. And of course, we now have to transform back into the x realm. So sinh theta is actually just a over root 2, which is convenient. That means theta equals the arc sinh. So, oh wait, sorry about that. That is not a over root 2. Terribly sorry about that. It's x over root a. Why on earth would I pop in root 2? Possibly because root 2 is extremely common. So that's cinch, which means that theta is going to be the arc cinch of x over root a. So let me just pop that in. We have a over 2 times arc cinch of x over root a plus cinch 2 theta, which is, of course, 2 cinch theta times cosh theta over 2, which cancels out, leaving behind cinch theta times cosh theta. And we know how to express these in terms of x. One because of our substitution and the other because of the way that these functions are related to each other. So for sinh theta, we know that that thing equals x over root a, whereas for cosh, we need 1 plus the, the root of 1 plus the square of sinh. So that is x over a, leaving behind a over 2 times arc sinh of x over root a plus let's see, a plus x, mm, x over a times root of a plus x squared, that is. Terribly sorry about that. Anyway, so that's what the integral sorts out to, which implies that y here is equal to x plus or minus a over root 2 times arc cinch of x over root a plus x over a times a plus x squared in the square root plus a constant in, of integration b that is just minding its own business. But of course, that was the case of a being negative, rather positive. But what about the case of a being less than zero? So if a is less than zero, then we'll just call a here equal to negative c, where c is positive. In that case, we're interested in evaluating the integral of root x squared minus c dx, which can still be solved via a hyperbolic substitution because recall the cosh squared theta minus sinh squared theta is equal to 1. But that means something. That means that cosh squared theta minus 1 is equal to sinh squared theta. So with a transformation of letting x here equal to cosh theta, we'll get yet another solution in terms of hyperbolic functions, only this time in terms of the hyperbolic cosine function. So I'll leave that as a little exercise to you, the viewer. So comment down below the solution you get for this case. And as always, that is to say, as is longstanding tradition, my good friend Zunaid Parker will look through all of these cases of y, differentiate them twice, and then reconstruct the nonlinear differential equation we started off with. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Watch out in the comment section for Zunaid's solution. Thank you. See you next time.